Hi, I'm Hannah from the Police Digital Security Centre and today I am going to highlight some of the latest cyber threats and trends currently in circulation and run through some tips of how you can mitigate these threats. Just to break down of who we are for those of you who do not know, the Police Digital Security Centre is a not-for-profit organisation owned by the Police Crime Prevention Initiatives, working in partnership with government, academia, law enforcement and industry. Our aim is to help small to medium sized businesses reduce their risk to cybercrime and fraud by changing the notion that cyber security has to be complicated. Many cyber threats can be avoided by taking a few simple steps that are cost effective solutions and even free. You can even use these skills at home. We can all play our part in keeping our working environment safe. All of our advice is in line with the government's National Cyber Security Centre. So why do you need to know about the threat landscape? Everything seems less daunting if you know what you are up against and how you will approach the situation. If there's a fire, we know to leave the premises and use fire extinguishers. If you fall into the sea, we are advised to lie on our backs and float. Knowing the threat landscape around cybercrime and fraud will help you better protect your business from criminals and reduce your chances of suffering from an attack. It will also help you to develop your incident response plan should you fall victim. At the very least, sound preparation will potentially reduce the impact of an attack. Cyber criminals act fast and cyber attacks can rapidly advance, so you need to also act quickly in response. An incident response plan helps you make informed, timely decisions so you can stay organised and in control during a pressured situation, therefore recovering quickly from an incident and allowing you to get back to business as usual. I won't go into too much detail about incident response plans today, but our leaflet here provides essential must-haves to include in your plan and can be found on our website. But I will point out the first recommendation on the leaflet, and that is prioritise. Assess the type and severity of the attack. Where does it classify on a critical to low risk register? Find out the top threats to your business and envisage how the attack will play out from identifying the attack to recovery. Knowing the latest cyber threats will help form the foundations of your plan. Criminals take advantage of any situation to try and commit fraud and the COVID-19 pandemic and vaccination rollouts are no exception. Fake text messages invite recipients to click on a link and book their vaccine. The link takes to a fake but convincing NHS web page which asks for banking and personal information. Another smishing message, as fake text messages are known, asks for a yes or no text response back, which results in a charge to your phone bill. Also look out for fake COVID passes for sale online and through social media. Cyber criminals are calling, texting and emailing the public, pretending to be from the NHS. COVID passes are free and available via the NHS website, app or by calling 119. Regularly test your ability to spot fraud and wherever COVID is concerned, go directly to the government, NHS or other trusted websites and apps for further advice, advice <coughs> rather than responding to fake emails, texts or phone calls. When we came out of lockdown and started buying tickets to events, there came an increase in ticket fraud. The victim not only loses money from purchasing a fake ticket, but is impacted emotionally from not being able to attend the event they were so looking forward to. To avoid disappointment, check your ticketing site as a member of STAR. Secure tickets from authorised retailers. Our furry companions even became a subject for fraud. With many of us looking for a pet, fraudsters have been advertising pets that don't exist. The victim puts down a deposit and never receives the pet. Again, there are financial and emotional impacts from this. Make sure to visit your pet in person or at least video call with your pet so you know it exists. Look to buy from an assured breeder so you feel confident in your purchase or adopt from an reputable rescue centre. One key trend all businesses should look out for is supply chain fraud. Criminals will pretend to be in the supply chain to gain access to the systems of large corporations. Attacking the supply chain allows them to bypass high-end security solutions that larger organisations adopt. Criminals might copy a business email address domain to appear authentic or take over an email account so emails are sent directly from a genuine source to their target. 
Use DMARC to protect your domain from being copied so only authorised users are sending emails from your organisation. Implement cybersecurity best practices, including updating software, using strong passwords, two-factor authentication and antivirus to reduce the risk of account takeover. Next week, look out for too good to be true offers and fake products during the Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales. Although this leaflet was produced last year, the messaging remains the same. Double check the website URL to make sure it's not a copy of a legitimate website. Cyber criminals will make small changes to make the web address look genuine. For example, for policedsc.com, they might change the O to a zero, which might get overlooked. Don't click on links embedded within online advertisements, even when the advert is on social media as it could be taken to a fake web page or the product doesn't exist. Search for the product or website directly and do some research beforehand to ensure it is genuine. Look for the locked padlock in the left of the browser bar and the web address should start with HTTPS. Any information submitted to the website, such as a form of financial details, will be encrypted so cyber criminals cannot capture your information. Keep in mind, this does not indicate the website is genuine. Cyber criminals can just as easily set up a secure website. This just means your information remains secure whilst being sent to the criminal. Don't give anyone information. Don't give any more information than you need to to make a purchase. So online data stored about you remains minimal. Use a credit card or third party payment system like PayPal to make a purchase rather than a direct bank transfer, as your money is better protected from fraud. Don't make purchases on insecure Wi Fi, such as public Wi Fi, as cyber criminals can capture information as it travels across the network. If you do not shop regularly at an online store, check out as a guest where possible and have one less company storing data about you. Ransomware is a malware that locks a device or filing system from a legitimate user access and demands a sum of money to be paid for its release. Criminals are even locking users out of online accounts, including social media. You should endeavour to not pay the ransom in response, as there is no guarantee your data will, will be released and you'll be funding criminal activity. So having data backups available will take the pressure off of paying the ransom by default and you can continue with business whilst actioning your instant response plan. It is in your instant response plan where you can include the exceptional circumstances when paying the ransom is necessary and justify this decision. However, we would rather you didn't fall for ransomware in the first instance and as with any malware, cybersecurity best practices, including updating software, enabling firewall, having the latest version of anti-malware and awareness training of social engineering techniques will greatly prevent you from suffering from such an attack. Strong passwords and two-factor authentication will reduce the risk of account takeover. Routine backups will help you to recover quickly from an incident. Consider the, da consider the data essential to running the business and how long you can afford to be without the data help you form a backup strategy. Be sure you are not accidentally backing up the malware infected files as you will reinfect clean systems and become stuck in an attack loop. Ransomware has evolved to seek out and infect backups first before you are made aware of its presence. Store backups off the network to keep them safe. Regularly restore your backups to ensure they are fit for purpose. You do not want them to be unavailable at a critical time. The future of ransomware is prevalent and has potential to have real world impacts that disrupt our lives. The WannaCry ransomware attack on the NHS is an example of how disruptive this attack can be, bringing hospitals and GP surgeries to a standstill. This ransomware didn't target the NHS, but exploited a specific Microsoft software vulnerability in an outdated software system.
Further information on ransomware can be found on our website. But again, knowing about this attack means you can better develop your incident response plan. Here is a list of common attacks. This can be found on our website, but to summarise each type of attack, a data breach includes lost or stolen devices or hard copy documents, unauthorised access or extraction of data from the network. Denial of service is typically a flood of traffic taking down a website, can apply to phone lines, other web facing systems, and in some cases, internal systems. Insider is a malicious or accidental action by an employee which causes a serious, which causes a security incident. Falling for a phishing email or actively stealing data for a competitor are a couple of examples. Phishing we talk about a lot, which are fake emails asking the recipient to action a request. Malicious code is a malware infection on the network, including ransomware. Targeted attacks is an attack specifically targeted at the business, usually by a sophisticated attacker. Unauthorised access. Access the systems accounts data by unauthorised person, another unauthorised person, internal or external to the business. For example, access to someone's emails or account. Zero day attacks exploit security flaws in software that are yet to be fixed by the manufacturer. This is why it is crucial to patch the software as soon as an update is released to reduce the window of opportunity cyber criminals have to take advantage of the security flaw. Make sure to have the latest antivirus in place to detect and remove malware and turn the firewall on to monitor connections to and from the network. The firewall will block, block any connections that are unauthorised. But as standard cybersecurity best practices, eliminating unnecessary online activity and staff awareness of fraud will greatly reduce your chances of encountering a zero day. Allow updates to install automatically so this doesn't become an afterthought. Our sign up to the latest threats, threat alerts leaflet lists reputable sources you can use to stay in the loop of the latest fraud software vulnerabilities and cyber threats. CISP, or Cyber Security Information Sharing Platform, run by the NCSC, is a bit like a chat room where organisations and IT experts can share updates on fraud, the latest threats and current cyber trends that they have encountered. If you need a sponsor, reach out to us. The NCSC also offers a weekly threat report which highlights key threats seen each week and provides advice on how to stay safe. The latest report talks of the US stock trading platform Robinhood data breach, compromising personal information of more than 7 million of its customers. This platform is only available in the US. Virtual private networks are an increasing target for attacks. Make sure to update or patch, as it is known, your software and use multi-factor or two-factor authentication, as it is also referred, on your accounts that access VPN services. Include this threat in your incident response plan. Guidance on VPNs can be found on the NCSE website. Action Fraud has a newsroom and is our national reporting body. They issue guidance based on the most common fraud trends. Their latest article talks of payment diversion fraud, particularly towards house buyers and businesses. This involves criminals impersonating others, creating or amending invoices and diverting payments to bank accounts under their own control. There are particular annual spikes in this fraud when businesses reach the end of their financial year. For businesses and home buyers alike, verify any changes in bank details or instructions directly with a trusted known contact and hold off of paying until you feel more confident. Consider a different form of communication, such as a phone call, in case there has been a compromise of the email account. As with supply chain fraud discussed earlier, criminals can copy email addresses to look authentic. So remain vigilant and think before you action any request. Educate your elderly loved ones about courier fraud. When victims receive a phone call from a criminal who is pretending to be a police officer or bank official. Typically, victims are told to withdraw a sum of money and someone is sent to their home address to collect it. 
criminals may also convince the victim to transfer money to a secure bank account, hand over their bank cards or give the criminals high value items such as jewellery, watches and gold. Action Fraud have received 2,060 reports so far this year, with an average loss per victim of just over £5,000. One common, attack, one common tactic used is where victims are contacted by the fraudster who attempts to persuade them to purchase gold as part of a police investigation that is later collected by a courier on behalf of the criminals. In some cases, the fraudsters have invited themselves into the victim's home and collected their valuables, saying that the victim's possessions are no longer safe and they, as the police, can safeguard them. Another common tactic used is called open phone where the victim is persuaded to stay on the line to the criminal whilst they go to withdraw money or go to the jewellers. This stops the victim interacting with anyone else or having the chance to think about what is really happening. Your bank or the police will never call you for personal information or PIN numbers and they won't come to collect your bank card from your home. Hang up if you receive such a call and wait five minutes before making another call, as criminals can remain on the line. Another resource on the list is the Cybersecurity Breaches Survey, written by the Department for Digital, Culture, Culture Media and Sport, which summarises cyber attacks businesses and charities have faced over a year. This is usually issued annually in March and compares the threats micro, small, medium and large businesses have faced, as well as charity trends. All of the other links send you to reputable sources of information that have a newsroom or ease newsletter. In summary, knowing the threats your business is exposed to is a vital part of being proactive in securing your business. Prevention is preferable, but in the event you do fall victim, be prepared with an incident response plan. Re review this regularly to make sure it will be fit for purpose and will protect against the latest cyber threats. There is always a risk new cyber attacks will emerge but many are classics that we already know how to prevent with good cyber hygiene. I could go on and talk about so many cyber threats out there, but there simply isn't enough time to cover them all in this presentation. So sign up to a newsletter to learn more. Look out for ransomware attacks and if you fall victim, visit No More Ransom, which provides solutions to remove the malware without you needing to pay the ransom fee. If you fall victim to fraud, contact Action Fraud. Forward phishing emails to report at phishing.gov.uk. Forward smishing messages to 7726. Report fake messages to the N N <coughs> fake websites to the NCSC. And for phishing phone calls, hang up and call 159 to contact your bank. Further information about this new scheme can be found at Stop Scams UK. Enjoy the sales coming up, but be safe whilst you shop. Just a few extra resources for you. The Information Commissioner's Office is where you should report a data breach. They have a self-assessment, so you can check whether reporting a cyber incident is necessary. The NCSC have certified organisations that can help you create incident response and disaster recovery plans. Our website at policedsc.com has free resources for you to use and share. The Metropolitan Police provide little guide booklets and videos to raise awareness of fraud. Police Cyber Alarm is a tool to help organisations understand and monitor malicious cyber activity and is also free. Thank you for joining me today. Do check out our resources at policedsc.com and we look forward to seeing you again next time.